everyone, Cherise here and welcome back to a new video. Today, I'm very excited to bring you my 2024 bullet journal setup and my brand new notebook, the Archer and Olive Coffee and Books design from their fall collection. It has 160 GSM paper and 192 pages, which is really nice. It is, however, out of stock at the moment but they have other beautiful designs available in their website if you're also looking to start a new bullet journal. And as always, you can use my affiliate code CHERIES10 for 10% off. Okay, let's start with the setup. First and foremost is with my name on the introduction page in a simple cursive handwriting. Then flipping our way again on the next page to set up my 2024 cover page. We will be using brush pens and black fine liners today and these are from Ohuhu. The tools I will be using will be listed on the video description. I wanted to go for a themed yearly setup and I decided to go for flowers in glass jars. So we start by drawing our illustration using this 0.2 black fine liner and outline my existing sketch. Beginning from the glass jar with a little bow tie and then a bunch of flowers and leaves. It doesn't have to be anything specific. You can absolutely draw any flower you like. But for the first jar, we're drawing a cluster of these daisy-like flowers. We're drawing the stamens in a round shape on the middle, then the petals of the flower closest to us and work our way around it. I like to make this drawing more sketchy so there are a lot of fine lines in between each petal to make it more interesting. Now we drew the curve we see on the rear of the main flower. This will help us place the second flower correctly. We're drawing the petals a little bit shorter this time and placing the shadows on the stamen more on the right curve so the flower will appear angled. Our third flower is just on top of our first one and it's facing upwards. We drew just half of the stamen and then a petal under it that is also facing upwards and surround them with more petals. In ink drawings like this, we can achieve the direction of the flower by adding these fine lines to the petals and knowing where to add shading to create dimension. On our fourth flower, we just drew petals that are fully covering the stamen and the fifth one that is similar to the flower on the other side but with longer petals and facing the right side. On the white spaces is where we can play around and build up our composition. We drew some big and small branches of leaves to fill these spaces. You can draw a circle around it using a pencil so you'll have a guide to keep the whole arrangement in a nice circular shape. Then we also drew the stems and some more leaves inside the glassware. As you can see, I'm avoiding a space here because that will be covered anyway later in the video, but you can of course draw them fully. We're also drawing some lines around the jar to emphasize the cylindrical shape of it. Onto our second jar of flowers, we are drawing the flowers a bit different for some variation. It's hard to tell what kind of flower, but you are free to draw the flowers however you like. We are basically doing the same principles and we are just drawing flowers and leaves that can fit the space we have here. Now it's time to add color onto our drawings. Let's take a couple brush pens at a time. I like to blend brush pens together. You might have seen me do this technique before. 
Some of you mentioned that you'd like to see me doing more of this, so here you go. I have the lighter color on my right hand and darker on the left. Then we will put the brush tips together to distribute a bit of a darker pigment on the lighter brush. Then we like to work on the areas that need shadows, like the base or near the stamen and in between each petal. We like to control the amount of dark ink that goes into our lighter brush tip. The darker ink will eventually wear off depending on how much there is on the brush we are using to apply them. Then we can color the rest of the petals with the lighter color creating a gradient. But in case there are still pigment left, you can just take a scratch paper and transfer the darker ink by doing some strokes until it goes off. We use two shades of yellow here, but on the other hand, we are using shades of pink for the petals and brown for the stamen. You can also make them colorful and not just using a single color for each arrangement. I think that would also look great. Then we're using two shades of green for the leaves. I'm also showing the color codes written on the pens in case you have them as well. The jars will be colored with warm grays. We want to make them look more like glass, so we are not applying the color fully, but just on the shadowed parts. And lastly are the jute twines tied in a bow around the neck of the jars using a brown brush pen. Our last addition to our cover page is of course the year 2024, but we are adding them using these craft paper tags with different shapes and glue them on the white spaces here. We're using these wooden stamps to stamp the numbers 20 on the first tag and 24 on the other. Then we'll just complete our whole illustration with some more shadows beneath the jars and creating a whole illusion on the craft paper to match the background by covering them with white ink. And that's our 2024 cover page now done. Let's focus on the opposite side of our spread. We're gluing a rectangular craft paper on the center of the page, then we're using this Pentel Energel gel pen to write the key's title. I was today years old when I paid attention and realized that it's better to use a gel pen than a fine liner on top of craft paper because the gel pen ink shows up well than the fine liner. Or maybe I have tried it before but I am a huge fine liner user that I ignore the difference. <laughs> But anyway, we're using alphabet stamps to put tasks and events above and below the craft paper, respectively. On the spaces under the subtitles, we're listing down the symbols I personally use to signify and mark the status of my tasks and events. Even though it's not necessary for me to create a page for it, I still want to, especially for those of you who just found the system and would like to start, so you can use this for your reference. That makes the first spread of my 2024 bullet journal set up. We can move on to the next empty pages to set up my future log spread. For the uninitiated, a future log is a place in which you can keep track of all kinds of events future dates and appointments, and other special locations. In terms of the layout, we're writing the title in the same lowercase font on the top, then we're gluing the mini calendars written on craft paper vertically. Three months on the left and three months on the right. And then I'll be writing the events on the white spaces across. 
I cut them into rectangular shapes with rounded corners. There are spaces on the left side and that is where we are stamping the months in numbers. I like to change notebooks every 6 months, so creating a future log spread for the first half of the year only is necessary for me since the second half are always empty in my past yearly setups, but you can absolutely create for the whole year depending on your needs. Once we're done with the layout, we can add a couple decorations here. We are drawing another jar of flowers on the space beside the title and behind our January mini calendar. Florals are one of the easy and fun drawings we can add in just any page and we can draw different variations to keep them unique on each own but still cohesive as a whole. We're drawing three petaled flowers here and we're drawing the petals a bit wider and oval in shape. Then we're surrounding them with misty-like flowers where we draw a bunch of branches with small buds. The jar is pretty much the same but just a bit straighter than the ones we drew earlier. We're using two shades of pink again for the bigger flowers and olive green for the stems and misty flowers. The next jar will be on the lower right. I decided to draw dried baby's breath. And you may have seen this kind of flower in so many places, like my desk decoration in many of my videos. <laughs> they have many small white flowers, so we're just drawing these random small irregular shapes and some looking almost like dots for flowers that are starting to grow. I feel like this would look better without the ink drawing on the stems or just using the fine liner tip of the green brush pen, but on the flowers, we're using a very light orange that looks more like cream on paper and dark olive green toward the stems. The jar is not behind anything here unlike the one on top, so we drew the jute twine around the body with a bow tie. We have a space at the bottom of this page. I'm not sure what else to use this for, but we'll just put a block of color using this peach brush pen to create a balance to this layout. Alright, that's it for my 2024 future log spread. We can move on again to the next one. We're doing another illustration along this side of the page. I was looking into more flowers in a glass ideas and I saw a picture of a dried flower in a tall cylinder glass. So that is what we're drawing here. We start with a tube with a cork on top. On the inside, we're drawing a rosebud. We begin by drawing the sepals or the small green leaves at the base of the flower. Then we're drawing the lines indicating the petals that look like a teardrop or a U shape. We're also adding small flowers underneath as well as their stems and leaves. Alright, our ink drawing is done. We're coloring the rose using a mix of yellow and brown, the little flowers with peach and stems with a bright green. And of course, let's also color the vase. We're using the same brown for the cork and outlining the glass shape a bit with warm gray. You also notice I drew a little unfinished string around the neck of the vial because we will attach this rectangular craft paper that is like a tag hanging on the bottle to write our goal's title. We're dividing the whole spread into five categories, personal, spiritual, home, work, and financial goals. We will then cut out this page vertically and turn into a Dutch door. Then we can flip to the other side and glue another craft paper that is matching the one behind. And here we will write media. 
this will be a small section for some books, movies, and series that I'd like to read and watch. I made a separate media journal for this year. Even though it's a fun one to make and I enjoyed filling them with my reviews, for 2024, I don't think I can squeeze it in my journaling habits and to also make room for other things, especially now that I run my own stickers and art print shop. But on the opposite edge of the spread, we're gluing a longer craft paper. This page will be some kind of a bucket list. So on top of this page, we're stamping draw a flower when you and then on the craft paper itself, I will be writing some activities I wanted to do. I haven't written them yet in this video, but I'll probably add them in the beginning of 2024. For now, I just drew some bullet symbols using a white gel pen. Then on the space here, we will be drawing an empty glass jar with a bow tie and color them a bit. So each time an activity is done, a flower will be drawn here. They will be any kind of flower too, so nothing is specific with that. I wonder how many flowers I will be able to draw here. <laughs> Our goals, media, and bucket list are now done. Next, we are making a spread for managing my finances. On the left side, we're gluing another long craft paper, but this time, just the top and bottom parts. You will see why later, but in here, I will be writing the budget title. Below are categories like the starting balance, income, expenses, savings, and ending balance. The white spaces will be divided into first six months. The first spread will consist of four months. As for the layout, we're cutting this page into a size that we can slide through the craft paper. So that is the purpose of not gluing the other sides of it. When we flip this page, we can insert it here and we can still see and refer to the categories and write the figures in the same row so we don't need to create another section to write all of this. I also added a wishlist column here which is intentional so that I don't see it often and be able to save properly <laughs> or just spend for those things when I have the capacity. On the other side will be my savings tracker section. I did write a savings category on the budget, but I wanted to have some kind of a visual aid to see how much I want to save for the year and how much is accumulated during the first six months. So we're making a sort of a bar graph here with the amount on top and the things I want to save for on the left side. I divided each bar into 10 using dashes. Each box has a corresponding amount, so I'll just color them in. We have a small space below, so we'll just use that to add a little flower with several long petals and bigger leaves, kind of hugging the flower and placed in a round vase. Next, we're setting up this page to list some video ideas I might have for each month. We're having the title above with the same lettering style. My main topic is usually a bullet journal plan with me video, but when I have time, I like to branch out a little bit and do some painting tutorials or stationary related videos. And if I'm not able to do it on a certain month, I can still plan on topics that I can make videos about for another time. We're using these horizontal craft papers for 6 months, then we'll have a month column on the left where we're just stamping the numbers with these large wooden stamps. 
and simple line dividers and blank spaces to write the topics later on. We will draw another flower arrangement here and this time the flowers are varied. We have a flower with large petals on the center, medium flowers that are a bit pointy and curvy, we have a couple daisies and smaller ones with three petals. We're just really doing this with no pressure for details or anything like that and I'm just playing around with different colors and blending them. It may look a bit much in terms of the amount of drawings but I wanted this setup to be achievable especially to any one of you who is new to bullet journaling. And by the way, if you need more inspiration, I've published three more yearly bullet journal setups in my channel so you can watch them after this and see if you can find a layout that you can incorporate in your own. And if you've been here since day one or for a long time, I'm curious what's your favorite yearly setup I have done so far. Let me know in the comments. We're having a small section for some notes just beside the illustration and below for listing and tracking some items that may be sent to me by brands to collaborate with. We have finally come to the last spread we are making today. I included a word of the year this year, so I thought it would be nice to include one again for 2024. We glued another craft paper above and instead of writing word of the year, we're writing word to hang on to. I chose the word grace because I need to give it to myself, especially in the area of solo parenting and to other people too. But above all, I need God's grace. I don't want to feel entitled to it just because of my relationship with him, because nobody actually deserves it, but he gives it anyway because he is good. So here we wrote grace in big letters and then another drawing of a flower in bloom with a bunch of smaller ones like baby's breath on a glass bulb planter hanging on the letter R. And that's the reason why we entitled this page as word to hang on to. <laughs> We're coloring the stamen of the bigger flower with yellow and two shades of pink for the petals light orange and dark olive green for the baby's breath and the stems. Yellow for the twine that is wrapped around the cap of the bulb and light gray for the glass. And then going back again to the flowers to color the background a bit with light green. We still have a space over here so we're writing a beautiful quote that says, Grow in the root of all grace, which is faith. Believe God's promises more firmly than ever. Allow your faith to increase in its fullness, firmness, and simplicity. The page next to it will be for a prompt called When In. This is something new but I thought it would be a nice pair to my word of the year page. We're having the When In title on a craft paper likewise. And then we're attaching this little craft paper envelope that I made myself. I also cut five copy papers with different lengths. The difference of each paper is about two dot spaces. Then we're coloring these spaces with our brush pens.
I also rounded the corners using a paper puncher, but this is optional. So this is just a special page for me to refer back on when I feel in doubt, anxiousness, anger, frustration, and impatience, or at least when they try to creep in my mind and heart. So I'm writing those feelings on the colored headers and the scriptures that correspond to them. One final decoration is drawing simple branches of leaves on both sides of the envelope. And that's pretty much it for my 2024 bullet journal setup. We are almost at the end of this video, so let's flip through all the spreads we made together. There won't be a giveaway for this one, but I hope you still consider all the extra videos as a treat and that you got some new ideas and layouts for your own 2024 bullet journal setup. If you decide to recreate this, you can tag me on Instagram so I can see it. And remember to subscribe to the channel to see more bullet journaling content from me. I can't wait to show you my January 2024 setup that is going to be up later this month. But that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll talk to you soon in my next video. Bye everyone!